Hello again, everybody. Welcome to our next installment of Screencast Lecture Series. The topic today is a continuation of what are living things. This will be the fourth characteristic of living things. What is stimulus response? Let's get started. First of all, we need to know that organisms, as a characteristic of living things, will respond to their environment. That's characteristic number four. A stimulus is something that will cause a change in an organism. So it could be just about anything. It could be a very, very bright light. It could be a loud noise. It could be somebody slapping you in the face. So there's all different kinds of different stimulus or stimuli that an organism can experience. And that stimulus or stimuli will cause a response. And that response is defined as a reaction to one of these stimulus events. So we have what's called stimulus response. What is the stimulus in this situation and what is the response? What is the reaction? Go ahead and take a look at this picture and think in your mind, what do you think is the stimulus? Well, the stimulus is the man feeling the cold temperature and the response is that the man is going to shiver. He's going to try to maintain a 98.6 degree body temperature. When your muscles contract, when you shiver, that actually does produce heat. That causes heat in your body and it will warm your body. That's why shivering is is a good thing if you're cold because it's, to, it's getting your body to warm up. One of the really bad dangerous signs of hypo Thermia, which hypothermia means not enough heat, so you're getting too cold, you could freeze to death. One of the danger signs of hypothermia is you're shivering and then you stop shivering. That's a danger sign because your body systems are kind of giving up, not being able to keep up with uh, the cold weather, not being able to get your body warm enough to function properly. Here's another scenario. So we have stimulus and response. Give this one a thought. The stimulus is feeling a hot pan and the reaction is letting go of the hot pan to avoid burning the hand even more than you may have already done. What is the stimulus? What is the response? Here is a light. Here is a plant. Let's take a look at a real quick video clip showing phototropism in tomato plants. This is something that you should have experienced when we did the eco column where you recall when we had the eco columns up against the window the plants tended to grow towards the sunlight, towards the window, and they would be bent over like this each, each day, f facing towards the window, trying to get as much sunlight as possible. Here we go. This is just for fun. Here you see a comic about stimulus response. And another one, one of my favorite all-time comic strips, The Far Side. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Here's another one. Here's something that's called classical conditioning. Here's a experiment that is very, very famous, a very, very well-known experiment, and sometimes it's known as Pavlov's dog. And the experiment showed a dog where when a dog would look at food and be prevented food presented food to eat he would start to salivate he would start to drool that's a normal reaction that dogs have so the stimulus and the response is the stimulus will be the dog either seeing or smelling the food and the response will be the dog drooling stimulus response before conditioning or before training a dog would normally hear a noise like a tuning fork and not really care i mean it would hear the tuning fork might be interesting, but maybe get his attention, but he's not going to do much. Same thing with the bell. He hears a bell ring. He doesn't really care. It's a bell. Um, so that's before training. Now, what Pavlog did is every time he served his dog food, he would also ring a tuning fork. He would also ring a bell. And so he would continue to do that over and over again. Every time he would serve the dog food, he would also ring the bell. And so over time, the dog would start to actually salivate just by hearing the bell. He wouldn't have to have the food. He wouldn't have to smell the food, see the food. It didn't matter anymore. He learned that the bell would be associated with food. So he was conditioned to have a new stimulus here. The stimulus was the bell ringing and the response was salivating. Here's a clip discussing Pavlov's dog. 
Pavlov, a noted Russian scientist, won the Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine in 1904. As this original footage shows, when food was presented, the dog salivated quickly, an inherited salivary reflex. But over repeated testings, a strange thing happened. The dog salivated before contact with the food. Just the sight of the food was enough to stimulate their drooling. Then, just seeing the food dish, or even hearing the footsteps of Pavlov or his assistants, was enough to trigger this built-in reflex. What was going on to elicit this response? Pavlov decided to find out by systematically varying the stimuli and measuring the dog's reaction. An original stimulus elicits an automatic, unlearned response. Both stimulus and response happen naturally. Then a second, neutral stimulus that never elicits the unconditioned response by itself is introduced just before the presentation of the original stimulus. If the neutral or signaling stimulus is presented alone and a response occurs as if the original stimulus were still there, we say that conditioning has taken place. The arbitrary neutral stimulus becomes a conditioned stimulus. Sound, sight or smell can influence the way our muscles tense or relax. For instance, if I say relax and then do this, you're going to be startled and upset. After five or six pairings of relax, just saying the word relax is going to generate a negative response rather than its usual learned reaction. Okay, guys, that's all for this episode. Uh, next time we're going to have our final clip on the characteristics of living things. It's going to be homeostasis. Catch you next time. See ya. Toodles.